Um, I'm going to be running through um, one of our sessions, which is all about healthy lifestyles. Um, so predominantly the Get Help to Get Active team support individuals with um, physical or mental disabilities and impairments to become more physically active. Um, but if you join into one of our group sessions, we also do run through other supporting health factors. Um, so today I'm going to be running through healthy lifestyles, which is a focus on um, the diet and, and healthy eating. So a nice balanced diet. So I'll just share my screen now. I've got a little bit of a presentation. Hopefully you'll be able to um, see that okay. So healthy lifestyle, we're going to be running through um, very briefly. Um, what is a healthy lifestyle? So we're going to be focusing on the diet for this one. So a balanced diet. A balanced diet can mean different things to different people. Um, this is the definition that we have here. So eating a healthy balanced diet is an important part of maintaining good health and can help you feel your best. So this means eating a wide variety of foods in the right proportions and consuming the right amount of food and drink to achieve and maintain a healthy body weight. So when the proportions start to go off a bit, this is where you can experience either weight gain or, or weight loss. So it's all about maintaining a healthy weight. Um, when we use the term diet, this doesn't mean necessarily a restrictive diet. It doesn't mean um, all of the fad diets that you may hear. So we're focused on just a balanced diet. So I'll run you through some government recommendations. And it's a really great visual on how they show to eat a balanced diet. So it's called the Eat Well Guide. So um, it could be referred to as the Eat Well Plate also. Um, so with the Eat Well Guide, it gives you a great visual. You can imagine this actually being your plate when you're designing your meals. Um, so it gives you your carbohydrates, um, your fruits and vegetables, um, your proteins, your fats and your dairy also. So it gives you all of the um, portions for these, the visual. So when you design your meal, for example, this portion of your plate should be your carbohydrates and this part should be your, your fruits and vegetables. So it's a nice visual there. Um, just over a third of the food we eat each day should be made up of our fruits and vegetables. And this is the same with our carbohydrates. So our potatoes, bread, rice, pasta. Um, it also goes into um, beans, pulses, fish, eggs. So this pink section here. Um, so it does say to aim for at least two portions of fish a week, including a portion of oily fish, for example, salmon. It goes into your dairy. So dairy um, is a great source of um, things such as um, calcium, um, also sources of protein and vitamin. Um, and you've also got some a thin bit there, the purple section, which is your oils and spreads. Um, so generally, um, having fat in our diet is essential, but generally we are consuming too much saturated fat. So unsaturated fats are much healthier options. Um, these are um, plant sources in liquid form, um, such as vegetable or rapeseed oil. So it's a great visual. Um, it also gives you here, which is a great tool, um, I call it the traffic light system. So when you're out doing your food shopping, it gives you um, red, amber, green, and it should, the red stands for high. So on this example here, you can see there, obviously that section is high, um, which is, if I have a little look at my reference, so that's the sugars, for example. So it's showing high sugars and it gives the percentages. So that's a great visual when you do your shopping to pick some healthier alternatives or healthy options. It also gives down here, the amount of calories we should be consuming, um, government recommended. And so per day, this is 2,000 for women, and then it's 2,500 for men. So it's a great guide of how to design your meals and how you should have a balanced diet. So it's bringing in a mixture of foods. Um, this is a great time to look at the different food groups and see if there's any specific groups that you think you're consuming too much or too little of. Um, so you may um, reference this and think, oh, I, I don't actually eat much protein. So it's a good opportunity um, to review what you eat and make a little note if you do recognize anything now that perhaps you're not consuming within your diet. So the next section of healthy living I'm going to move on to is hydration. Hydration is really important. And from the Get Help to Get Active team, I'll reference this to physical activity as well. Um, so the aim is to drink six to eight glasses of fluid every day. 
This can include water, um, lower fat milk, teas, coffees, fruit juices, smoothies, and they all count um, as part of hydration. In terms of the fruit juices and smoothies, though, um, these do contain quite a high level of natural sugars, so these should be limited to a portion of 150 millilitres per day. That's just so we're not over consuming the amount of sugar, which can obviously lead to weight gain. Um, it also mentions alcohol as well. Alcohol is um, highly calorific um, and there is a sort of a general um, rule of thumb um, guidelines for government that alcohol should be li limited to no more than 14 units per week. Again, this is a really good opportunity to have a little look at hydration. Think about how much have you um, consumed today so far in terms of fluids? Um, so even in the past, um, if, if you've obviously since you've woken up, the past hour, the past four hours, have you drank enough fluids so far in the day? Um, if not, take a little note and then obviously try and um, you can even try and timetable this throughout the day to make sure you're getting that six to eight glasses. Referencing that back to physical activity. If you do physical activity, um, I would always recommend to consume a little bit more um, just because when we're exercising, we're uh, losing a lot of the fluids within our body through sweat um, and energy. So you do need to consume more water to make sure you're hydrated. And I always recommend when you do exercise to have um, a bottle or a glass of water with you. Um, the reason being is that the average adult body contains 55 to 66, uh, 65, sorry, percent water and 80 percent of our muscle tissue is water. Um, so it really does show the importance um, of consuming water. Another one to think about there. Um, it gives some benefits of water here. So I've jotted a few down for you. Um, so the benefits of drinking water. It helps digestion and absorption of food. So in all of the food groups from the Eat Well plate, all of the nutrients and the vitamins that those foods contain, water actually helps you digest and absorb these. So it's a really great way to obviously boost your health and to make sure you're getting um, the most you can from your balanced diet. It removes toxins and other waste from the body. Um, sorry, I have put that one on there twice. Um, that one should have said um, carries nutrients and oxygen. So there you go. It carries nutrients and oxygen throughout the bloodstream, um, helps regulate your body temperature, and it also helps to cushion the joints. Um, so obviously regulating the body temperature and cushioning the joints, again, linked to physical activity. Um, if you're not consuming water, you can find yourself overheating throughout exercise. Um, and also it helps to cushion the joints. So when we're doing some um, higher impact exercises, obviously it helps to cushion the joints. So um, it reduces the risk of any damage through exercise. So in terms of um, what we've covered today, this is all included in the Eat Well Guide. And I have included a link there. What I will do for you is I will pop that into the, um, the chat box within the group. So then obviously you can have the full link so you can reference that. Um, if you have any specific dietary needs, um, the Eat Well plate can, can vary slightly. So you might like to speak to your GP if you feel you need specialist um, guidance on that. Hello, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Hannah. Um, that's very interesting. As always, the pre-exercise uh, pre talk. Uh, I would like to, uh, while everybody is seated comfortably, to just introduce our new movement today. Okay, can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? Okay, brilliant. Excellent. Thank you so much. We are not able to, we can hear you, but we're not able to see you. Oh, okay, yes. All right, <laughs> that's because I'm using an external um, uh, an external camcorder. <laughs> okay, so it's not uh, my laptop, but I would like to uh, just come into my laptop, describe what the new posture for today, and then I'll invite you to stand up and joining me to experience this. Okay, so uh, I will switch my camera to the laptop camera and so you can see me 
um, a little better. Now, in the past five weeks, uh, we have been learning each posture, uh, po each session, to understand how it all works. And uh, the first five movements. Number five last week was actually quite challenging. I don't know whether you uh, feel how you feel. The posture itself can be quite challenging, um, having a number of things to think about. Today, we are entering a new treasure of the Ba Duan Jin. The name for this um, lesson is called Shuang Shou two hands, pan zu, reach to your feet, uh, forward bend, gu shen yao, is to strengthen and improve the function of the kidneys, kidneys meridian. Uh, as you can see, there's a little picture uh, here uh, with my hands raised over the head. And I will explain uh, step by step what we are doing today. Okay, so this is the transition. So from, uh, in a moment, you will be able to join me, from hands from above, extending your arms, imagine you have long arms and long fingers, and stretch up high and soften your knees, sliding your hands down to the middle position, and then slide your hands as though uh, we have done initiating the chi, the earthly chi, forward, fingers forward, palms down. This is all preparation to engage with the energy. And then we reach hands uh, at the chest level, rotate palms up, from palm facing down to palm up, spread, starting to spread, follow the rib cage and to the back of our spine, and hands, as you can see, reaching to the mid back, keeping the shoulders down, and then we start massage. This is the meridian, a bladder meridian that runs through our body, uh, follow the spinal column, which is very uh, important for our well being of the flow of our making the body supple and energy flow. Then we massage all the way down to the base of our torso and continue. Here, uh, when you join me, you will, ex oh, let me see if with the next slide, why doesn't it move? <laughs> okay, oh yes. Okay, we continue to move, to massage to the back of our legs, through the back of our knees, all the way down to the back of our Achilles, the heels. If you can't reach to your feet, then just reach as far as you comfortably can. For those who are joining me on the chair position, you will be very careful. Make sure you don't fall forward. Make sure you're seated firmly, your torso base, uh, your connection with the chair. Okay, so we are going to massage from the back of the heels to the front of your toes. Here is, oh, is a... Oh, the side view, the last um, so the side view is for your palms connect with the back of your feet. And this at this point in time, you will be bending forward. Difficult to see me uh, from the camera. That's why we sh I'm showing you, explaining this um, beforehand. And then we slide our hands forward and travel forward, lengthening from the tailbone, from the left left picture here imagine you have a tailbone and stretching the tail and then stretch beyond your fingers feel you have long arms and long fingers and almost creating a tabletop position and this is how we stimulate this meridian long meridian the from the middle position is the front view and then gradually floating yourself up and to back to this hands over the head position. Okay, oh, so this is the start, ready to start the next cycle. Okay, so I've now broadly on the canvas showed you what is the transition, our new movement. Now let's, I would like to invite you to join me for 
the warm-ups and the initiating the qi. I'm sharing gentle music in the background and you will see, be able to see me. Okay, hopefully you can see me. Now in from the head to the toe, make sure you can see my hands and feet together. Good. As always, before we start our Ba Duan Jin, make sure you are in a safe space around you. And you are always welcome to choose your comfortable positions. I'm showing you on a standing position, but if you are um, mostly chair, uh, you know, chair exercise only, you, uh, you can adapt this all on the chair. I will show you the chair version later. And always remember to take your time to enter the frame of mind that is calm, quiet, and tranquil. Good. In your mind's eye, checking your crown by Hui is lifting upwards and so the energy is pulling you up and tuck the chin slightly in and down allowing that straightness of the back of your neck and our energy and also release tensions and stiffness in the back of our neck and feel your eyebrows are nice and open Quite often, our emotional stress can be reflected in the eyebrows. So we start frowning and squeezing. So trying to spread your eyebrows and feel there's a smile in your eyes. The tongue touching the roof of our mouth, making that bridge, magpie bridge. Lips are gently closed. Slow and smooth your breathing. Deep your breathing at the same time. Remind ourselves shoulder should be broad and down. Good. Now we're entering our calm and relaxed, but at the same time, high degree of awareness to our internal change, internal body. Good, follow me. Soften your ankles and knees, taking half a step to your left. I'm doing the mirrored image and taking one moment to initiate our energy, to awaken our senses. Inhale, palms facing up. Exhale, palms sliding back. Again, almost feel the wave of gentle water, gentle wave of the water behind me and grows in our body, inside of our body. Inhale. Exhale, long and smooth. Our body is made up by a lot of fluid. Almost 70% of, of our body is made up by fluid, one way or another. Inhale. And we want our body, external body, to be as soft as water. Soft can be same as strong. Nothing in the world can be as strong as water at the same time. Soft. And ready to raise your hands from the corner. Embrace our energy in, allowing the energy into our body, soothing the cavities and rotate, palm facing up, 
rise, get in, connecting to our heart, heart center, the energy center. Soften your knees, release the stagnation of energy. One more time, rise. Feel we are at peace with ourselves and we're at peace with the nature and the energy in our nature has a lot of healing energy now we open ourselves to the wide side gathering up and hugging embraced energy into our body through the crown Traveling down, soften your knees, allowing the stagnations to melt away. Deep inhale, long, smooth exhale, letting go bodily tension, stiffness, maybe anxieties, worries, last time, and long smooth exhale, purifying, cleansing our internal organs, and in your own time, rise, we embrace the chi back to the abdomen, as if you are hugging and embrace this air balloon energy ball to our lower abdomen we call Dan Tian in the Chinese term this is energy center restoring replenishing and nutrients to our internal organs in your own time, retracting your hands slowly back to the abdomen. Good, well done. And take a moment, listen to your own breath, feeling the connections between your palm, Lao Gong Point, pericardium meridian, to the abdomen. And in your own time, giving yourself a nice, smooth massage. The tummy is connected to the back of your spine. Good low abdomen, the gate for life, we call it. How always set yourself at space and time once a day. It belongs to your own self and just switch off from the external. Good. Now we're ready to work in our joints. Now head and shoulder first. Float your hands from the core, from both sides. Cupping your ears. Open the elbows. Take a deep inhale. Soften your knees, stretch to the back and squeeze the elbows in. Inhale, open your chest and exhale, sitting down, lengthening the tailbone, open to the back. Again, inhale, good, gazing out. Exhale, soften your knees, sitting, open the back of your chest, back of your spine. Last time, big opening, inhale, and long, smooth exhale. Stretch to the back of your neck and shoulder. As you inhale, we return, palms open, floating down. Now let's do the shoulder rotation. 
Lift your shoulders and roll back. Inhale, exhale. One more time. Inhale, exhale. Working back, back the other way. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. One more time. Gradually, progressively, open deeper, open wider. And adding an extension to our shoulder rotation today, rest your hands on top of your shoulder. And now let's use the elbow as a big pencil. Draw a big circle from your elbow. Lift elbows up, squeeze elbows in. Good, as if you're drawing a big round circle. Elbow is the pencil. One more time, open wide. Lift up high by your ears, squeezing in. And back the other way, squeeze the elbows in, floating up to the ears, open wide. We progressively open deeper, open more into our joints. Well done. Feel your arms are heavy and relax. Allowing the arms to be loosened. Okay. Shake away all the tensions and stiffness from our shoulders, elbows, wrists, fingers. That's it. Keep our knees a little softened. That's good. And now let's try to go sideways. Relax, relax, relax. Soften your knees and slightly turn the waist, the torso. That's it, slightly. Good. Feel your arms are like the ragdoll arms. So there's no control of any shape. Just release, release, release. Well done. Good. Letting go. Now back to the center. Let's do some stretching. Fingers interlocked and turn palms up and out. Deep stretch. Just as though we're doing the treasure number one. Hold up heaven. Take a deep inhale from here. And we do the side stretch to your left. Gently Guide your hips to the right and breathe out and soften the body. Inhale, bring your body back to the center. Keep lengthening up, up and over to your right. As you stretch to the right, guide your hips to the left and relax into that deep stretch. Well done. Inhale, bring yourself up and return palms back to the chest. Now we're going to try bend forward, prepare for today's new movement and gently go down to the left foot with your hands interlaced, sending the tailbone to the ceiling and feel the gentle put. A stretch at the back of your hamstrings, calves. Breathe out to release the tensions. And try to your right foot. Again, tummy to your spine, like hinging over, like closing a page in the book. You're folding over. In your own time, we're going to bring ourselves up. And from the tailbone, soften the ankles and knees. Tailbone first, gradually roll yourself up. Vertebrae by vertebrae by vertebrae until your crown is tall and the golden string lifting you up. And then spread your arms, hands to the back of your lower, up, uh, lower lumbar, supporting the lower back and gently squeeze the buttocks and lengthen the tailbone and gently bend back in 
only when you're comfortable to your comfortable degrees. If you can still lengthen into your neck. In your own time, gently bring yourself vertebrae by vertebrae by vertebrae back to the center straight. Well done, giving your kidney area a gentle massage. We will do more massage in today's posture. How? And to prepare ourselves a little more, I like to take you through once more to the wider stance. Ma Bu, horse riding stance. This is a versatile, strong posture, but really good for uh, releasing any tensions to the lower back. How? Join me, bring your palms from the side. Raise your hands, take a deep inhale. Feel you opening up again from the whole body and sitting. Have your hands together in a prayer's position. Sitting, feel your back is sliding down. Follow a panel or a wall behind you. Good. It may feel difficult when at the beginning, feeling tired, tiring posture. Rise and follow me again. Feet parallel forward. Take a deep inhale. And as you're sitting down, your knees are softened in the direction of your toes. And feel your toes you're able to release, so your body weight is sitting back, sitting on the back of the heels, and your tailbone is down. I'm doing it extra slowly. If you feel tired, you can rise a little early. One more time. Deep inhale, prayers hands, long, smooth exhale. Good, hands stop by your heart center in your mind's eye, checking your alignment, body shape. Crown go up, tailbone come down, and sitting strong. Mother Earth pushing us up. Well done, and rise. Well, good. You may feel the quads becoming stronger. Now let's bring the heels in, toes in, like this, heels in, toes in, heels in, toes. Good, well done. Giving yourself a little shake if you're not used to it. Can be a little bit um, tiring at the first time and feeling burning sensations or even a little shake. It's all part of your progress, okay? It's normal, nothing uh, to worry about. Now we're going to try to do a little bit hands and ankles. Ready? Put your hands, interlace your hands as if you have a small ball between your palms. Gently um, loosen up your wrists, fingers. At the same time, we're going to point our toes and point our heels. Toes stretch, heels stretch. Toes stretch, heel stretch. One more time, toe stretch, heel stretch. Swap over, toe stretch, very simple exercise, but strengthen and stimulate our meridians on our feet. Good, and return. The next, um, because we're doing more of many of you doing more computerized work, we're going to add another wrist and finger exercise, starting from the heel of the palm, okay, and gently um, touch and roll onto the thumb and to the back of your hands, and then from inside and like opening a book, and then rotate like a flower spot. Okay, and then go round. Okay, at the same time, see if you can do the roll of your ankle. <laughs> see if you can do two things 
at the same time, spontaneously. Ah, swap over and now rotate back the other way. Swap the other foot. Little challenge to the mind. The movement is controlled from the mind. Good. If you can't, don't worry. Just focus on one, either your foot or your hands. Okay, good. And now we're ready to learn our new posture today. Ba Duan Jin, movement six. This is our sixth lesson. So watch me. The transition from our previous movement is shake the head, yao to, sway the head, and shake. Shake the head, sway the tail, and where we make a wider stance. We make a wider stance and do the hip roll and the neck roll. This is our previous movement. And to uh, transition to today's movement, we need to take the step in. The right foot will come in. I'm doing the mirrored image. So you will sh sh spread your arm to the side. Shift your weight. Um, I'm doing the mirrored image. So the right foot in should be this way. <laughs> okay, so as you spread your arms, taking the right foot in, half a step, and raise your hands, floating them over the head, palm to palm. Good. And elbows flexed almost closing the lid of a box. Palm facing down, finger to finger. Continue to go down towards your hip level and soften your knees, sitting onto a high stool, rotate fingers forward and sliding the hands forward from the side view from here. You're sliding as though you're traveling your hands Traveling forward, sliding forward, and then floating yourself up for the second time. Nice and straight, so your arm in line with your ears. And turn palm to palm, front view, palm to palm. For the second time, elbows flexed, closing the lid of a box, palm floating to the chest. And now rotate from palm down to palm up and starting to spread, spread, follow the rib cage and be, be careful, don't raise the shoulders, shoulders kept down, sliding, passing the armpit and then reach to the mid back, shoulders kept down. Now we're ready to massage. Can you see? Massage our meridians following the on the side of our spine, all the way down to the base of our torso. Continue, bend, bend and massage. Continue the massage through the knees and calves to the heels. And then bring your hands round to your toes. And this is where you see the slides earlier. Sliding your hands forward, parallel to the floor, and then floating, floating yourself up and lift your torso back up. Turn to this year, hands by your year position and then turning palms in. Hop. You're stopping here for one moment and just gently get, guide your hands back to the abdomen. Okay. Returning hands to the abdomen. Before we go on to uh, practice again, let me just remind you, only do as much as you comfortably can. You don't have to reach all the way down to the back of your heels if you are not um, you know hitting that brick wall of your body listen to your body if you have you can only reach down to your knees and then that's it. this is your limit and then let let it be 
and just stay here okay and if you can go a little bit further wherever you feel comfortable to bend and touch that is your uh where you need to stop okay what i would say and um to guide you to work with your body is in your mind's eye you imagine that your hands have just gone on a little bit more not a physical shape so your hands just stopped where you are maybe by your knees but in your mind you are imagining um i say imagine in a positive way okay and your mind is extending a little bit more to the back of your calves and then and bring your hands round uh, and feel there's a in connect invisible string and in between your palm to your feet okay this is for those who cannot physically touch and you you feel as though you're touching it may not uh, feel easy or difficult to how do you imagine but in, in with practice this is why we use mind to lead the chi and it can happen uh, i i can promise just trust me <laughs> and so if you can't reach don't force yourself this is number 1 and number 2 is gently encourage by mind um visualizing you are touching a little bit more how uh this is for the safe practice but also uh you will be surprised how much you can progress with the guide of your mind The second um small detail is to keep the back leg straight when we massage our way down. It doesn't matter how far we can go we we can go. And um, this is straight. This knee is nice and straight. Not locked. Straight but not locked. <laughs> it's a fine balance. How do we know if it's locked or not locked? you need to feel the muscles on your quads here just have a feel when you lock your knees you you when you push the knees back can you see the small small changes that engage with your muscle here when you're locking your knee this strip of muscles the quad muscles is actually tensed okay we may feel it okay the it's it may Mm, on the a lot of athletes you may see the uh, you know the muscle fibers very well defined and that strip it, you can you can feel it however in our qigong internal energy we don't want to reach to the locking position because that tension actually uh, creates um potential blockage but at least it's not encouraging for the energy to flow so we want to have straight fully extended but not locked position so this is a tricky one to feel as you massage your way down without locking your knees but lens yeah go down feel you're sending the tailbone to the ceiling okay lift 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 that will give you a natural straightness of your legs without feeling the um you know locking the knees okay so now extending it forward the next stage after you have done the alignment and now sliding forward on the way up on the way up two small details when you floating hands forward before you go up before you lift up make sure you rest your neck and head the neck and head from here on to your arm rest your head on to your arm letting the arms lifting your head up so your head your <laughs> almost the baby you rest your head on to your arm let the arms floating the head up okay so let's try it the three things i have mentioned so far in detail um if you can't reach all the way down 
and what you can do and pay attention to your knee position and also on the way up your neck head and your arm position so with that three small details let's try again starting from the previous position horse riding stance this is our previous um, treasure and transition now arms spread shift your weight to your left taking your right foot in halfway feet shoulder width apart hands floating up arm close to your ears palm to palm and folding in elbows and feel that you're scanning the body almost the first time no stop all the way down to your hips soften your knees rotate fingers forward and sliding forward rise standing up rise deep inhale palm to palm now the second time closing the lid of the box at the chest level now we're ready to rotate palms up spread to the mid back and massage our longest meridian in the body and fold forward bend massage your way down sending the tailbone up and bring your hands round to your toes sliding your hands forward rest your head onto your arms allowing the arms to be lifted by your arms good and again now let's repeat turning palm to palm close the lid of a box finger to finger chest level rotate spread and massage down flex and bend in your own time continue down to your comfortable level bring your hands to the toes sliding forward keep lengthening head onto the arms floating yourself up by the arms good keep going palm to palm elbow flexed hands down to the chest rotate and spread massage keep straight legs bending forward and massage your way down and fingers to your toes sliding forward and keep lengthening head rest onto your arms well done by yourself one more time i have a look how you get on good if you can remember can you try to do one more time uh, let me have a look how you get on and spreading your hands massage the lower lumbar the back of your legs the back of your knees beautiful and then hands onto your toes lengthening yourself rest your head onto your arms oh good very good there's lots of good postures i can see if you're not tired out and let's just do one last time one last time floating the hands back to the chest finger to finger excellent spreading your fingers round to the back of your mid back and massage your way down flex and bend well done really really beneficial for our lower back and sliding the hands forward rest your head onto the arms floating yourself up fantastic beautiful alignment everyone beautiful excellent and slowly return hands to back to the abdomen in your own time oh that's it beautiful i can see so many of you doing beautiful postures and i'm so glad you're able feel comfortable to turn your um 
camera on, uh, I can see the uh, flow of the energy is so beautiful. Yesterday is the 8th of March, the International Women's Day. Um, recognizing in modern times, women play such a big, important role in our society and increasingly so in job and careers, job, um, you know, uh, market, the women is doing so much contri contribute, so much positive um, energies into our workplace, of course, in our home life, we're daughter of our parents, our wife to husband and mother to our children. We have so many different roles to play and we spend so much time looking after other people. And it's so, so important to look after ourselves uh, every day. Spend a little bit time giving it to ourselves, restoring and replenish the energy within us. So I saw many uh, lady and beautiful female practitioners today. I just wanted to say, you look beautiful when you move so gracefully and that peaceful energy is just radiant out in from your, your posture. Good, um, we're coming close to uh, the end of today's lesson. Now I invite you to join me to do the two postures. Ye last week's posture, uh, the shake, the <laughs> shake the head and sway the tail. Join me for that one and also today's new posture. Good. So when you're ready, well done doing beautiful posture movements. And now try to soften your knees we're connecting to the previous posture we're holding a large air ball large energy ball and raise our energy ball up and take a wider step to your right raise it up and soften our knees and lengthening the tailbone that sitting strong and firm relax at the same time a quick refresh and reminder rise and lean uh, 左, 右青, we go right leaning to the right and the extension diagonal rotate from the shoulders and sway to the left to the second diagonal line and from your hips hips rotate and neck rotate and lengthen our tailbone and head and rise working our way back lean rotate and sway to the diagonal line and from the hips rotate circle the neck and lengthen the tailbone and crown. Let's do one more on each side. Lean, diagonal line, rotate and sway. And hip roll and neck roll. Then lengthen tailbone. Last time, rise, lean and sway now connect with the tailbone neck and sitting spreading your arms rise transfer weight and taking half a step in into our new posture today oh Flex your elbows, palms coming in. Continue to scan the body down to the hips. Soften your knees, sliding the hands forward. Rise, inhale. Shuang shou pan zu gu shen yao. To strengthen the kidney and massage the back. We bend, forward bend. 
down, lengthen yourself, floating yourself up. Good. Second time, palm to palm, finger to finger. Rotate, spread, massage, forward bend. Bring your hands to your toes, sliding forward. Rest your head down and palm to palm. This is our third time. And getting easier all the time. And perhaps you find your body is getting softer all the time. Last time, palm to palm, finger to finger, and rotate, spread, massage, forward bend. Oh. Floating yourself up. And now we return hands back to the abdomen overlapping your hands wonderful taking one moment in your profound calmness how in your own time sliding your hands down good and shift your weight and gently taking your left foot in, feet together, roll your shoulders a little and release any potential possible tensions on your shoulder, giving yourself a little wiggle on your fingers and little shake on your foot. That's it. And checking, making sure our still our body is still nice and soft through the exercise. Good. Um, we're going to do a little bit cooling exercise. Um, time is almost there. So raise the heels. We're going to do a little gentle shake to the body. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and dropping the heels. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Make sure your shoulders are relaxed, elbows relaxed, wrists, fingers are all relaxed. How? Oh and dropping and now let's do the, some gentle tapping okay from the back of our arms to the top of our shoulders and down over again the back of the, our arms and the inside of our arms good swap over the back of our arms and the inside of our arms once more and good and we use you our fingers the best healing part of the body and gently give our breathing channels a little tap through the chest to the belt level okay we have done this before and then to the kidneys we all know how important our kidney is doing a lot of cleansing for the body and tapping back to the side of the hips and then from the side of the hips outside down the inside of our legs good okay i hope you have enjoyed today's session i will come to closer to the computer to, you, to answer any questions you may have. All right. So have a lovely, lovely day, a nice week also. I shall see you next week. There's um, last today is the sixth session. So we have just uh, two more sessions to go. All right. So well done for staying, pursuing and persevering. So knees are feeling sore. Is it normal? Okay. Uh, okay, Laura. It, uh, it's Laura. Okay. Now, if you 
feel yeah, if you feel the knees a little sore only today only today then i would suggest you can uh, sit uh, with a higher position just sort of a, maybe because you're sitting a little low today and so giving a little bit high uh, posture the posture a little high it possibly is the knee collapsing inwards a little bit or maybe too much pushing outside uh, as long as your knees are flexing in the direction of your toes it should be okay just take it easy yeah. okay very good question and very good uh, observation and feeling the body and always good whatever wherever you feel it i would advise um for now uh, well to reduce this is try to focus your mind to the to lengthen forward from your fingers and feeling the tailbone is pulling back a little bit more trying to focus you uh, the feeling of front and back this way it the the tensions to your lower back will be reduced by um sort of like spreading it away so it's um it, it, it is kind of a bypass if you like it actually spread out and the other part i don't know whether how well you exercise but we call it ta yo is to release your lower waist release is the lower back that this here is a little bit tense that's caused it so if you look from the side if you drop if you drop if you drop here, then you can feel that release of it. Right now, it's you probably are in the bearing weight bearing part. So it's a minute, it's just minute alignment of the, of the spine. Uh, have a go and try uh, see how it feels. Thank you. Um, Lawrence has asked how to place the breath. I assume um, basically this is about the breathing technique. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, it's from Lauren. Is that right? Okay, right. Um, in general, you breathe in as you rise, expand your rise. Obviously, this posture is a big long route for the arms and take one deep inhale uh, as much as you can. If you breathe out before your hands reach there, then just convert to a natural breathing. Don't hold your breath and just go back to natural breathing uh, but you will find you can fit in one deep long breathe breath either inhale or exhale in the process okay and the rest just <laughs> relax and natural breathing thank you so much and i'll see you all next week ha